Would you believe it if we told you that there's an ingredient that gels when it's hot and melts when it's cold? Well today, we're going to learn about all the different types of methacellulose here on WTF. Hello and welcome to WTF where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, the owner of Modernist Pantry. Today Scott and I are going to be talking about all about methylcellulose. And if that's a mouthful, that's because it is really hard to say. <laughs> so um, as you can probably see here, we have bags upon bags upon bags. And we're going to talk about what they are. We're going to do a really amazing demo on how do you make hot ice cream. So mm -hmm. definitely stay tuned for that. Um, so let's get into it. Scott, we have like seven, eight bags in front of us right now. What is methylcellulose? So methylcellulose is a plant-based fiber. And, mm -hmm. and one of the biggest thing that people are going to see is like there's a lot of numbers and letters at the end of them. Yep. So it'll say methicell or methylcellulose and then letters and numbers. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing we need to learn is how to read and understand what those are. All so right. the first letter is always going to be the grade of methylcellulose. And we're actually going to have a sheet on our blog mm -hmm. that you can go and look and see what that grade actually means. Mm -hmm. After that, there will be uh, usually a number and okay. then followed by another letter. Yep. So that number is uh, stands for you know the beginning of the viscosity. Mm -hmm. uh, so if it's going to be, let's just say we have A15C here. Mm -hmm. So 15 C, C stands for 100, so it's 1500 CP, and that's how people measure the viscosity. Okay, and for people who are not familiar, viscosity is just how thick it is. Yeah, how thick yeah. it is. So okay. obviously the higher the number, mm -hmm. the, the thicker it's going to be, the lower the number, the thinner it's going okay. to be. And, let, and let's get back right back to that, um, to that first letter, and yep. I know you just said, you know, what A, so what is A in this case, that we have A15C here, right here? So A is a, is a super gelling uh, methicel, mm -hmm that um, if you take it and you put it into liquid, it's going to gel you know, really firm okay. at, at a low temperature mm -hmm. and it's going to make, be able to make something like hot ice cream that we're gonna do a demo of in a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then every, uh, you know, there's K, there's F, there's E. Right. Uh, those all have different properties. So some of them are better for making uh, your barbecue sauce stick better to the, to the meat. Uh, there's right. some that are used for pie fillings to prevent that boil out when you're cooking right. it. So there's a lot of different things that we can do with methicellulose. You just have to understand which one you need for what application. Right, yeah. So when we talk about gel strength, then we have like A through K and we say like A is the, the highest gelling. Mm -hmm. um, what's the C, is there a sequence there? So the same thing with the numbers, like what's the, um, I guess, if you're, you know, if we're looking at, so we're looking at A15C, so we know, okay, it's a super high gelling. Yep. So, so then, for A, yeah, it's super high gelling. It, there is a lot to each and every one. Right. I would definitely suggest going on the our blog and looking at the, yes. the, the chart because it, it, it's not just one thing that it does. There, okay. There's many different um, applications for each type and then we also have different ones so we have A15C and then we also have A4C mm -hmm. and that's just a difference in viscosity that's going to be viscosity when it's it's cool and then obviously it will gel when it gets heated. Okay and do all mother cells have the same gelling temp and melting temp? No they, every okay. every uh, grade of them do has different gelling and, and melting wow. temperatures so yeah. uh, the good thing about A is that it gels at low temperatures Okay. so it, it could gel really quickly when you put it into uh, we have like just simmering water here mm -hmm. so I'm gonna be able to scoop this in it's gonna gel immediately around the outside mm -hmm. and the best part about this is people hear gel and then hot ice cream right. it's not gonna stay a gel forever so once it cools mm -hmm. it will start to melt so it has almost reverse properties right so you know being one of the most popular questions we always get is well, what method cell do I use um, yeah what's what's the answer to that <laughs> Uh, so the, the best thing you need to know is uh, what you're doing. First off, if you take that and then you are able to go and look at uh, our chart and then figure mm -hmm. out, okay, if I'm making a sauce, I need 
uh, generally it's going to be like F50. You need just a small amount uh, right. of thickening, mm -hmm. and if it goes onto a, uh, you know, we'll just say barbecue sauce and pulled pork, because mm -hmm. that's an easy one for everyone under to understand, okay. it goes on, it's going to cling better. It's not gonna run right off, so if you're making a sandwich, it's not gonna make the bun soggy. Mm -hmm. So uh, it really, it's gonna have to go down to, I, I could mention every single thing that we do, but this would be a very long video, very and I'm long. sure people are waiting for this. <laughs> I do want to just keep going on the thickness and understanding okay. the thickness because if you are looking at them, they're not all, you know, if it's A15C, the mm -hmm. C stands for 100, so there's two zeros at the end, so it's 1500. But the K100M, which is our <clears throat> highest viscosity, yep. the I'm M stands for 1000, right so it is 100,000 CP, so that mm -hmm. is the the, the most viscous of all of these. And then we go all the way down to F50, and there's no letter after 50, so it's actually just 50 CP or 50 on the viscosity scale. Right. So you can go from almost no viscosity to like a crazy amount yes. of thickness with the 100M. Yeah, so it yeah. starts starts very thick before you even heat it. And then obviously sometimes <clears throat> there's different uh, differences between that. So the K100M, you can heat it and it will slightly gel, but it's not gonna gel as much as an A. So there's a lot right. to learn and that's why we definitely need you to yeah, go check so out that uh, chart. Yeah, so if there's any takeaway, it's go to the blog and read the chart because uh, otherwise it's gonna be yes. very hard to know exactly what you're gonna need. And and so kind of, you know, now that we've kind of covered all the numbers and all the letters, we also have two other types of methicillin here. So we have uh, one called HV and one called LV. Yes. Do you want to talk briefly about like what they are and kind of when and how people might want to use them? Yeah, so HV and LV don't have the numbers at the end, so people can't necessarily look at it and say, oh, I know that this is thicker or thinner than other methyl cells that mm -hmm. we're going to be using. The HV stands for high viscosity. There you go. That's around 1500 CP. It doesn't have a, another grade to it. Doesn't mm -hmm. doesn't have a... Uh, a writing but after it and then LV is low viscosity so around 400 CP mm -hmm. so if you need just a, a slight thickener go with the LV if mm -hmm. you need something a little bit more viscous go with the HV those are the two most common ones that it, if you want to just use it just for a little bit of thickening yep. use the HV and LV if you want to get really deep into what you're doing then you can use the uh, the more advanced uh, methicels yeah so it's so, a so kind of fun fact not mm -hmm. necessarily food related but uh, the LV can also be used to make slime for, mm -hmm. for if you're if your kids like Scott and I yep. making slime with them you can use methicel to do that yes. it's also commonly used as a dietary fiber so mm -hmm. In case you didn't know, so you could use it for that as well, although we don't uh, tell people how much to use because we don't know. Um, but speaking of applications, what are some of the other kind of common applications of methicel that people might come across? Like I said, methicel is used in so many things. It can be used from something as simple as making your ice cream you know, have less crystals mm -hmm. um, to the, the cling of a barbecue sauce to mm -hmm. hot ice cream. Yep. Before, when I said... I couldn't name them all. I probably can't name every single yeah, one right it, here. It's pretty <laughs> There's much. so many uses for methicillin. Absolutely. And I know there's also two types that we are not even covering today. Yes. And what are those? So we have microcrystalline <laughs> methicillose and, and carboxyl methicillose. Yes. And those are completely different. And we'll do something on them uh, in a future WTF yep. just because we don't want to confuse any more. You know, we're trying to just stick with the HPMCs and the, the MCs. Okay. So I know that in a couple of minutes here, we're gonna jump straight into this demo of the hot ice cream. But before we do that, another common question that we often get through email and people calling in is, uh, what is HPMC? So what is HTMC versus, uh, what is HPMC period? And then how is it different from regular MC? So HPMC stands for some of the grades of, of these methicellulose. Mm -hmm. So the E, the F, the K, mm -hmm. those are all HPMC. And, those will gel at a slightly lower temperature, mm -hmm. and they also mix in cold very, very easily, but they okay. won't mix in hot. So there's slight little properties uh, that are different between them. Uh, the A grade is MC, that's regular methicellulose, mm -hmm. and that's the one that we're actually going to be using today. All right. So we can so, see the properties of that. So if your head has not already exploded <laughs> from everything we just said, yes. let's watch a really <clears throat> cool demo about hot ice cream. So oh, let's move these out of the yeah, way. Yeah, move those. And, the hot ice cream is really good. So I have an ice cream base here, and this is a basic ice cream base. There's going to be a recipe on the blog for it. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and I added water to it. So it's not like a, you know, a custard base. I don't add eggs. I don't have to heat it to a certain temperature okay. to kind of do that. So it's actually a very thin base, but you can actually see when I take a little scoop out of here, you can see the viscosity. It's much thicker because I took uh, some really strong coffee. It was a, a cold brew I made, and then I added methicel to it. And this is the A15C. So you can see how thick it is. And very simple. I'm just going to take it just like an ice cream scooper. But I'm just going to clean up just a little bit so I can get it to my pan. Mm -hmm. So I have this liquid and immediately when I put it into here, it's going to gel. So I'm almost going to sink the ice cream scooper in and then... Okay. Uh, you don't want to yeah. plop that in there. No, because it's going to hit the water. It's going to you know spread a little bit. I'm going to try mm -hmm. and keep it in this uh, shape as best as possible. And will I be able to do that 100%? I, not really. <laughs> no, no pressure, but, Scott. Live yeah. on TV. <laughs> so I'm just going to put it in here, scoop it out. Yeah, so it's going to sink to the bottom a little bit there. Cool. And what I have here is I have a little crumble that I'm going to put my ice cream on top of. So I do uh, brown butter solids, which I just yep. take some brown butter. Mm -hmm. I add a little bit of milk powder and make it nice crispy. Uh, I dry that out with a little bit of our um, Enzorbit M. Mm -hmm. So if you watch our uh, past WTF episodes, we actually have a WTF episode on Enzorbit M. Yep. And then I take our culinary crystals, another star of a WTF. So I take that and then I mix it in here and there's a little bit of uh, English toffee Ooh. flavor drops. So I really try and get as much of that kind of roasted quality to it. So I'm just going to put a little bit on here, just a little bed for my hot ice cream, my hot cold brew ice cream. You like that? Mm -hmm. Hot cold brew. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to take... Coming to a, to a bar, to a coffee shop near <laughs> yes, here. Yes, hot <laughs> cold brew. So I take out my hot ice cream just with the scooper that I just did and then I'm just going to plop it right on top here Ooh, as you it's see the, the yes pop like crazy. so I put put it put the crystals in there so it sounds hot when you put on that hot ice cream it sounds like it's sizzling which yes is awesome. yes All right. can I eat it yeah you can eat it right, right on so camera. I've never had hot ice cream but it's the first time I eating it's hot probably ice cream. hot so just give it a All sec. right so so, so go right ahead. Okay. Yeah. So the outside, the best Ooh. part about hot ice cream is that the outside will gel and then it'll oh. take time to get to the middle. So it's going to start oh. to be a little bit soft in the middle and that's so totally fine. You so can you can kind want of see this and I wanted to kind of cut away from this size. So you can kind of see that the inside is now still liquid. Still liquid. Yep. So it's going to be just like melting ice cream and over time the outside will start to melt as well. Mm -hmm. So you should get all the, you know, qualities of coffee, but a little bit, um, bumped up by all the roasted stuff that's in the crumble. Yeah, I really like to crumble with it. And it's not like burning your mouth hot. It's it's no. nice and warm. It's definitely something totally different yep. from what people are used to. No one's going to be like, hot ice cream, that's yes. impossible. <laughs> but now you can do it. Yes. So it'll and, help for And then the, the fun of having it sizzle when it hits the plate and it's ice cream, so. Yes, and the, I think the Pop Rocks are just perfect with it because you can do like a complimentary flavor yep. or a contrasting flavor. Yep, so if you go to our, our website, um, modernistpantry.com, mm -hmm. you can go to Culinary Crystals and you can make whatever flavor of hot ice cream you want and mm -hmm. you can make whatever flavor of the Culinary Crystals, the popping candy, and it, you can mix and match and make whatever you want. But I love that, you know, it sounds hot when it hits the plate. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very important when people get it at the table. You can also do this table side, which is a common uh, yeah. practice for people. And I like kind of what we did here too, because like even after the ice cream is gone, those crystals are still popping yep. away. And it just, you really just get that continued experience of cool. amazing stuff, as always. <laughs> all right, so, um, all right, we're going to wrap up this episode. Anything we want to leave folks with before we sign off? Definitely check out our, our sheet on the blog. That's going to go Help. into everything about um, Methicel, HPMC, the properties of all of them. If, mm -hmm. if for some reason you didn't catch something here, go there. Go to blog.modernistpantry.com. It's going to be there, and you can really pick what you need. All right. Great. Well, from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Guerin. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you want these great recipes and these awesome ingredients, first, you're going to have to like, comment, and subscribe. And then you're going to go to blog.modernistpantry.com where you can find those awesome recipes and you can ask a chef. And to get these great ingredients, go to modernistpantry.com. And until next time, We'll be here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, helping you transform food.